This is my favorite. This is the closest to water out of the beers that we've tried. Yeah, very neutral. Before I stab on German, this will probably be like, oh, this is an insult to beer. Oh, the devil's in me. Ooh, I feel like the first wave is hitting me. I mean, it's good, but I'm already feeling great. What's up guys, we are Diana and Phil, Diana's from the United States and I'm from Germany and we recently went on a little trip to Belgium and Belgium is not only known for chocolate, waffles and fries, no, it is also known for beer. So we went to Albert Heim. We collected a lot of different beer, some of the popular brands, but also some of the different types because apparently Belgium has a ton of different types. So we're gonna dive into those. For Belgian beer, there's different types of glasses that you're supposed to have for beer, but we just have a few glasses here and we're gonna use an Alt beer glass and a Kolsch beer glass. Yes, very German glasses, but we're also gonna try 10 different beers right now. So we're only trying a little bit. So let's just get started and I'm just gonna grab this first one, which is called a Hublon Schuf. Schuffe? Hublon Schuf. I have different facts about each one of them while Phil opens this up. This is an IPA. It's 9%. 9% alcohol and they have this little dwarf guy or kobold or troll, whatever. He's a gnome. A He's gnome. a little That's gnome. That's the word I was looking for. So this one's an IPA. There was another type, but we pretty much just wanted to get this one because it's a very famous brand. It's pretty iconic. Again, this reminds me of very light pee. It's a very light <laughs> beer. All yeah. right. Here we go. First one, it's uh, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. So great time to film a beer video. Oh, I like it. Oh, very bitter. 9%, which is way more than oh, normal yeah. beer, right? I wanted to say that every beer in Germany is like four and a half to between four and five percent basically. And a lot here are way stronger. So I think you can taste this. This is not too bad. I also have to admit as a German, a beer connoisseur, I know basically nothing about beers of different types. Diana did a lot of research, so we're good on that part. She's gonna educate us, me here in this video. For this one, this is not my thing. I don't know if it's IPAs in general or this one, but I'm Pour sorry. It in there. Well, number two. This one, West Mall, it's a Trappist Double. Trappist Double. I don't know, man. A Trappist beer, which is brewed by a Trappist monk. There's only 13 Trappist monasteries in the world, which six of them are in Belgium having the most. They usually have single, doubles, triples, and it goes up to quadruples. That's pretty much how much alcohol content is in each one. And this one has 7% alcohol, and it's way darker than the first ones. Trappist beer, a double, I guess, and the brand is West Mall. Yeah. Let's see, it looks a little bit like a Guinness, almost. Ooh. Ooh, that's uh, like uh, Really? I like this you a little- can, You can taste the yeast in there. It feels, it tastes brown it feels dark. I really like a dark beer and also like a strong beer. Again, 7% is quite a bit, like almost 50% over the standard beer I like this one content. a little better than the yeah. last one we just had. It's a smoother flavor. Monks might know what they're doing there, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like this. Purple is my favorite color, so I thought it was pretty. At first I thought this was a little bit of a boring bottle, but they've got this little nub here, this little like, Outward angle, that's nice, right? So you don't spill, you got a nice grippy grip. Number three, we have St. Bernard's Triple. There's a guy on it, also looks like a monk. This one has 8%, what is happening here? This is a blonde beer, traditional Abbey style beer. So I think this does not qualify as Trappist because it's not under the Trappist organization, officially approved. You no, know what else is officially approved? Me. What, did, did it fall off? <laughs> no, it's so, uh, could the conversation just oh, make okay. it come off? So I think technically it's not a Trappist beer. The difference between Abbey and Trappist is Trappist beers are Abbey beers that are still brewed by Trappist monks. Well, Abbey beers are beers who were once brewed by monks, but now they're brewed by secular breweries. With that being said, a Trappist beer is an Abbey beer, but not all Abbey beers are Trappist beers. Gets that's, complicated now. I don't know, that's from Wikipedia, thank you. <laughs> Saint Bernard. Wow, you're just so funny. Is that what the, I feel like? Oh, it's Saint Bernardus. Saint Bernardus. Mm. Not Bernard, sorry. Dude. This is one of these wheat sensations where I think it has a bit of a banana flavor to it. But this is not a wheat beer. I know it's not a wheat beer, but it has a bit of a banana flavor to it. It's not banana, it's maybe the, the yeast or something. If you know what I'm talking about, I feel sometimes some beers have banana flavor to it. This tastes like a basic beer to me. I'm not trying to be offensive, but like a college beer. A beer that you would have at a college party. So to me, no? this does not taste like a standard beer, but more into the 
wheat beer direction, somewhere in between a standard. What I think standard is probably a pills, but wheat beer, I don't know. I like it better. <clears throat> Then the first one. Ooh, I feel like the first wave is hitting me. How a much alcohol bit. was in this one? Dude, a shit ton. This <laughs> was a triple. Eight. Eight percent. Okay. Why do they have so much alcohol in a beer? If I had multiple of these in one sitting, I would die. <laughs> I think so far that's my favorite. For the next one, I really like the looks of it. If you want to tell me this is Belgian, then I would say this might be Spanish. It's called Jupila and it's red and white and has this nice ox, this, this bull on there. So this is a Pilsner. It's at 5.2% alcohol. So almost normal. Almost normal. And it's one of the most sold beers in Belgium, around 40% shares by volume. This is a very clear beer. Look at that. Yeah. It, what do they say in Belgium? Prost? Yeah, I don't know. In Belgium, mostly people speak French or Dutch, right? Yeah. What is Prost in Dutch? In Dutch? Salud. Yeah, dude, I don't remember. Okay, well, cheers to you guys. <laughs> Oh, that's very neutral. That's so, yeah, neutral is the perfect world. It's very unoffensive. It's not too strong. It's very smooth. It's not too bitter. Like oh. every other one hits you with a strong flavor yeah. before, this one does not. So if you just want to drink a lot and get drunk, it's I, easier to drink, but not as much alcohol. Is this what people mean uh, when they say that beer tastes like water? Because this is the closest to water out of the beers that we've tried. That's Let, so true. Not, not very sharp in flavor, nothing that makes it stand out. I feel like this would be a good starting point to measure everything else from. Very neutral, very watery. Also, this is quite the small bottle, only 250 milliliters. I mean, it's good, but I'm already feeling great. You have to I'm check yeah, they all use a glass. <laughs> all right. Definitely feel like yeah, the video is improving from here on out. <laughs> It's just gonna get better. Time. This one looks funny. It says Lindemann's Creek Lambic Beer. It's weak as hell. Look at that, three and a half percent only. Lindemann's Brewery is a Belgian family brewery that began in 1822. Lambic beer is a type of beer brewed in Belgium. The types of Lambic beers include these ingredients that I can't pronounce. <laughs> And it's more of spontaneous fermentation and it tends to be mixed with fruit, fruitier flavor. You, so You don't say, look at the color. I think this one's gonna be cherry. It looks a little bit like a tiny wine bottle. Tiny. Some people say these are like the girly beers, um, which <laughs> I'll put this to the test and I'll probably like it more. <laughs> At only three and a half percent, so it is mixed with something. Yeah. That tastes like pull moll. You hate cherry though. Right. I'm not a fan of cherry, it's not that bad though. But there were these little cough drops you get as a kid at a German pharmacy, Pulmoy. They had cherry flavor and it was just basically just sugar drops. This, this is, tastes like that. Is this considered beer? I feel like this is so dangerous. It tastes like a very fruity drink, like, like a fruity syrup, like you said, like a cough syrup, but, mm -hmm. but a little better than that. It tastes better than wine to me. I would drink this. It's very bubbly though. Like a champagne almost. It's like a, a cherry champagne. I, I wouldn't know. Now I'm curious, if you're from Belgium or you know about this stuff, Lambic, I mean it says Lambic beer, would you consider this beer? For a stubborn German, this would probably be like, oh, this is an insult to beer, but I don't care. I think it's nice. I think it's the best beer we've had. This is a winner so far for me. <laughs> I like this one the best. Mm. I don't want to pour it because I want to finish it, but I know we have a lot of beer to go and I'll be wasted. By the I'm, time I'm finishing all of mine here. You're going to be wasted. Oh, that was good. Okay, okay, next all one. Right, next one, Duvel. Or Duvel. Duvel. Belgian blonde. 6.66. Duvel means devil in Barbantian, Ghent, and Antwerp dialect. That's what that means. So that's kind of why they have the 6.66, right? It's a clever play oh, on 666. So the uh, devil's beer. Yeah. This one is a very famous brand. So this is one of the popular brands. Oh, they have a whole bunch of devils with a D in the back. Did you see that? They're cool. dancing around the beer. They're dancing with their 6.66%. It's super pale again but not quite as clear as the other one. Put all that head. Ah, yeah, let's go for it. Oi! Oh, the devil's in me. Oh, mm. I don't like it. No, that's, nah, it's not, it's not so great. Why do they name it devil beer? Because it tastes like shit. I mean, on the positive note, their bottle and branding's nice. Look at this, it's, yeah. I like the little short bottles. The hand grenades. Yeah, they're nice to hold. That's why people don't like blondies. That's the sort. What? The, the, 
I don't think that's why. That's <laughs> my least favorite so far. <laughs> By the way, before we continue, quick word from our sponsor, which is Nobody. We don't have sponsors a lot, but we have a Patreon. So if you want to support us further than by watching the videos, which honestly is enough already. So thank you. Thank you. If you want to do more, you can go to patreon.com slash dnnphil, where we do additional videos. If you do so, we, we highly, highly appreciate this. Oh my God. It's I'm really hard to point. do when you have a little drinks in you, right? A thank you to our family tier patrons, Ethan Mitchell, Heather Kuffner, Hessen Matro, Shar Mills, Tarek Malkosh, Stephanie N, Megan Rosati, Klaus Izart, Lee Lim, Robert J. Casper, Marion Demert, Sherry and Keith Dennis, Jessica Saranzak, Jeff Standen, Debbie and Ray Gordon, and Jenna Louise. Thank you. Let's go. Delirium Tremens. Tremens? It has an elephant on it. I like it. It has strong blonde beer. Yeah, exactly. Phil didn't want to get this one at first, but I was like, the bottle is beautiful. We have to get it. I don't want to alert you, but it has 8.5% alcohol. I don't know what's going on in Belgium. What are you doing that people? Why are why are your beers like wine percentages here? So this is a strong blonde ale, 8.5%. It was named the best beer in the world in the 2008 World Beer Championship in Chicago. I was there. Fun facts. No. I wasn't even able to drink then. <laughs> the world's best beer, here it is. Looks the same. Germany would like to drink liters and liters of beer. I think if you drink you, liters, liters and that, liters of this, you would. What is that taste? Definitely better than the devil. But only the second the worst. Is it gonna be bad if I think you, what is it? Eupler is the best. Eupler <laughs> is the best because it has the least flavor. No, no, I like the Lambic one the best so far. It's a. <coughs> Oh. It's not too offensive flavor-wise. Like the Duvel was way stronger. I think it's still but quite But it has offensive. a very, <laughs> it has a very, um, I don't know how to say it, dry aftertaste. Like you feel like you need to drink water afterwards. Because it's- that makes sense. I think it's the high amount of alcohol. Maybe. That, ooh. Because the, the, the Belgium <laughs> are the strong ones. If you're Germany, you know the Faxa uh, cans, the one liter ones. And it tastes horrible. Say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little disappointed because the bottle is so cute. I expected it to taste a little better. I'm sorry, this is the worst, the worst one. <laughs> and you become is, more German when and you And this is uh, the second worst one. <laughs> All right, three more to go. The best ones for last, of course. Heschmel Busch, a Busch beer. And I saw a lot of Busch labeled Busch. beers. It says premium Belgian beer. Because Busch is one of the popular brands. However, it has eight and a half percent. Yes, this is a half amber bush beer and a half lambic beer. Oh, finally some color. It's a little darker, not quite as dark as West Mall or what was the dark one. There's a few types of bush beers, but the most famous is a high fermentation amber beer, which has a strong taste of malt, maybe stronger. At this part, I can't follow what you're saying, but I'm sure you can follow that. Ooh, yeah, the smell is a little Peachy. fruitier, yeah. I have a new favorite. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell, mm. Ooh, it's a little, you have to taste though. Oh. I like it. It's too strong, man. I'm sorry, it's too it's strong. It's so strong. And it's not super peachy artificial. You know how sometimes when you have like one of these yeah. like peach Fantas, they're very artificial peach. It's subtly in there. I like this one. I don't know what you're doing in Belgium. But well, these beers, they are too strong. I think this might be the best beer. I can't drink much of it. I'm also with, very peach bias. I'm going to throw up soon. I want to drink it. And the next one is going to be Chimay Pérez Trappist. Bier brassé en Belgique à la baie de Scourmont. Bier gebrouwen in Belgium in the Abdi van Scourmont. That's <laughs> Dutch probably. But so this is a Trappist beer brewed in a Trappist monastery. They're also really apparently famous for their cheese. You want to see a little party trick? I don't know if I can do it with this one. Oh no. It's a little... Oh no. Oh. No, it didn't work. It kind of worked. It's kind of open. This is what you do when you... If you do a better job, it just flies away. Pop. So this is another Trappist then? Yes, this is another oh. Trappist. This has a nice color. It's, it's not as transparent. It's a little translucent. Here we go. Jimmy. That is too, that's smooth. Really? That is to me the, the standard beer taste. It tastes like a standard beer, but very strong. 
Again, maybe because it has 8% alcohol. Why? Yeah, very strong. Why? But it's so smooth, you know what I mean? We were at this big store and a lot of the same ones have, you have the option between a single, double and triple. So you don't have to go and hard. Yeah, I would assume that most people just drink the single, right? Because the double and triple and even quadruple, I think. Yeah. I think might just taste way too strong and have way too much alcohol. If you want to have a fun time or you just built that tolerance, which we have not. Let us know how often you buy a triple or quadruple. I don't know, it's a way to save money if you want to get drunk as a 16 year old. Maybe I've just had a lot of to drink right now. The crown. This one is going to be the best beer. This is our carafe where we <laughs> put all the rest in and it's a big... Well, we have one more. We're going to the whole garden. The whole garden is where it's at, man. There we go. Whole garden. So this one is a wheat beer or a white beer, they call it. It says Vit Blanche, which yeah, Blanche so means white. white. The de-emphasized hops is unfiltered, giving it this hazy or milky appearance, which makes it a wit or white beer. I wanted to get this one because it's a little bit of a variety, right? We've had some Pilsner, we had an IPA, we've had a few Trappist, a Lambic beer, and now we have the wit beer, the white beer. Yeah. It's like a wheat beer. And this is actually very light again. Yeah. Not as clear though. Mm. Oh, and it has 4.9%. So the only one here with a regular percentage almost. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm was... leaning. I'm leaning like I'm on a bar like, hey, yo, whoa. I think we were supposed to pour it all the way out, right? Dance with the, floor with over the there. wheat beers. Yeah, if it's a wheat beer, sometimes they say the wheat settles on the ground. That's why you pour it all. Tastes better, but right now it just looks like this. Do you taste any specific flavors? Since I mentioned in the beginning, and again with the wheat beer, it tastes a little bit like banana. Okay, so this one is supposed to have a coriander and orange peel flavor. A little hint of A little orange. citron, maybe lemon flavor. Yeah, this is my favorite. It tastes the best. It is almost as neutral as the Yupila. Let me just Confirm that. Yeah, very neutral. This one has slight flavor. It's not too much alcohol, which makes it, I think the alcohol content makes a lot of these too strong in like weird flavor wise. So this is mine. One, two, three. So we have the peach, we have the cherry one, and then this very unoffensive Upula beer. <laughs> Yeah. And the worst one I think is this one for me. Yeah. Whoa, almost flipped that. Knocked it out of your I, own hand. For me, this is number one, the whole garden, Christ. like the whole garden. Um, I think Jupila number two, and if I feel a little fruity, then I'll go for the Lambic, Lindemann's Creek. Let's put some whole garden into I, I our mix here. Whole garden. There we go, and look at that. How nice that looks. Amazing color, good beer. If you chuck that right now, I give you five euros. A whole five euros. She always, she always says that, like for me, five euros is a lot of money. How is it? All ten together. Wow. It's just too strong, man. Yeah, that's uh, normally, sometimes we've made these concoctions and they taste okay. That is overpowering. We did this with the German beers and the German beers all together came out very nice, funnily. No kidding. But I think overall, this was very interesting because it was absolutely not what I expected from I, Belgian beer. I'm not a beer person, but I, I can see how people become beer people by researching it and getting into beers, right? Yeah, is it's, that a, how they it's a craftsmanship, yeah. right? It's experimenting and then finding the best ways to do it. You know, if it. there's 10 levels, I think I'm at level one now. Overall, it feels like that a little more inclined to experiment than the German ones. The German beers are very similar. They stick to tradition. They stick to tradition, the Reinheitsgebot. They are not shy in trying around, trying different flavors, putting them in there. So yeah. overall, good experience. And I'm gonna finish my, my whole mm -hmm. garden. I uh, will do my little peachy. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you sober next time. Bye bye. Bye. Look at the beer selection. This is just the international stuff. The beer specialist there knows exactly what she wants.